Okay, let's have a look at some questions uh, regarding using vectors to solve complex number problems. So, and don't be too worried if you don't get these on the first go. They're pretty hard. So, just have a, have a look through, take, go slowly, take them carefully and look at the diagrams carefully and see how you go. But they are reasonably difficult. First one, not so much. So, the first one's pretty easy. So you've got two complex numbers. What we want to do is show Z minus W and W minus Z. So if we get Z minus W, 3 minus 4 is minus 1, 2I minus 3I is minus I. So we get a minus 1 minus I, so that's Z minus W. So again, we could put that fixed vector up as a free vector, and it would be going in that direction there. So it's a diagonal of that parallelogram going in that direction so the first one there and then one plus i would be vector in this direction or well, it's a little bit it's not really to scale too well but again it'd be vector going in that direction there so there's our two there's our uh geometrically showing z dot minus w and w minus z it's the same distance uh, just going in the opposite direction of each other, which we proved before with the subtraction of vectors. Let's have a look at this one. We've got to express 2i and w, which is minus 1 plus 3i in modulus argument form. We know that modulus argument form is easier to work with, with a lot of these. And then we want to plot the points p and q, which represent z and w. So there's... That's what Z would look like. It's 2i, so it's no, no, it's going to be 90 degrees and just going up 2. Um, and then the last part is on the same diagram. I'm going to use different ones. <laughs> Construct vectors which represent Z plus W and Z minus W and reduce the exact value. So, again, we want to start working on the idea of what we've got. Now, I want, want you to pay a little bit of attention to the idea that you have the same modulus. So when we get there, so pay attention that we in this question we have the same modules there. There's our two vectors, two i and minus one plus three i. So that's where our vectors look like, and we as we said, they're the same distance, so they're going to be equal there. Now, I've drawn a, a, a much more complicated diagram in this one, but again, here's z, here's w, and now we know that they are equal. Okay, we know the angle around it there is 2 pi on 3. We know that's a 90 degree angle. So what we want to do is look at and get the argument of Z plus W and the argument of Z minus W. So again, we know what would Z plus W look like. Well, we go to W, add the Z, so, and we know that's going to be the same distance there. So it's going to go the same distance there. And we could do the same thing up this way, add W, but and again be same same distance, just the, the direction, because the moduli were the same. So what we should be looking at here is that the moduli of Z was the moduli of W, which was equal to two. So this time with our parallel parallelogram, it's a rhombus because all four sides are equal. So that was um, a nice fact in this regard to help us solve that. So Z plus W, how are we going to get that? So we know that we've got uh, 90 around there and we know it's, uh, sorry, 90 here and 2 pi on 3 there. Now we know uh, that diagonals of parallelograms bisect the angles at the vertices. So what we want to do is say, well, what would, if we know it's 90 here, what would this angle be? So what we'd need to do there is to say, well, if that's 2 pi on 3, and we know that's 90 there, so 2 pi on 3 minus 90 would give us an angle of our parallelogram being uh, pi on 3. So hopefully that, that works out. You've got the, your pi, the 2 pi on 3 minus pi on 2 would give you pi on 3. So from that, we're going to get that that's 60. So half the angle there would be 30 degrees, or pi on 6. So we get the idea that the argument there would be the pi on 2, because we're adding 90, and then taking this angle here, which is pi on 6. Sorry. Oh, I've 
haven't done that right. Two pi and three. That would be pi and six. I've done that incorrectly. Sorry about that. Made up, mucked up my subtraction. Two pi and three minus pi and two is pi and six. So the whole angle there is pi and six, which means half it would be pi and twelve, which is, there is my pi and twelve getting you there. And so that's pi and twelve here, and pi and pi and two there. Add the two together gives us a seven pi on twelve for our argument of z plus w. Okay, so there's our argument there. The ninety plus half of what the angle in the parallelogram was, which was pi on six, so which is gave us a pi on twelve, gave us seven pi on twelve altogether. Now, if we remember our properties of our quadrilaterals, notably the uh, rhombus, we know that these two are at 90 degrees. So the diagonals of a rhombus meet at 90 degree angles. So from that we could say if that's an angle of pi on, 7 pi on 12, if we subtract tw 90 degrees, so if we turn it 90 degrees back this way, we're going to get the argument of z minus w. Remember, we're going the the arrow will be pointing towards the Z, so it's going to be in that direction, so we're going this way, so it's going to be an acute angle, so we're going to get 7 pi on 12 minus pi on 2 would give us pi on 12 there. So that would be our argument there. So that means, we can see that there as well. We've got the 7 pi on 12, 7 pi on 12 there, minus 90 degrees gives us that angle there, which is the angle of our Z minus W there. So you can see in that little parallelogram happening there. That that's going to give you the 7 pi and 12, uh, pi and 12 for z minus w. Have a look again if you're not sure, but be careful of all those lines. There's lots of different lines going in different places there. If we look at the next one, z1 is 4 minus i. So there's 4 minus i there at the point 4, 1 down. z2 is 2i, so it's there. So I've drawn this one up the scale just to make it a little bit easier. We want to find a point Z3 such that Z1, Z2, and Z3 form vertices of an isosceles right angle triangle whose right angle is at Z1. So I've drawn the, tri the two, we're going to get two triangles here because we could have an isosceles right angle triangle, which means what we want is the distances there to be the same and a right angle there. So we could have that situation, or we could have the right angle going this way. And it goes off in that direction there. So, and that's going to be our isosceles right angle triangle there. So, what we want to do is have a situation where we're going to do that. Now, what I want to do is look at this vector here, so which I need to create. And from that, I want to rotate at 90 degrees that way. So, and rotate at 90 degrees that way. Now, a rotation anti clockwise of 90 degrees would just be multiplying that vector by i. Rotating in the anti-clockwise, and so clockwise direction would be a rotation of minus not minus i, a multiplication of minus i. So that's what I want. Once I get this vector, it's we should be able to find d and c here just by multiplying by minus i there and multiplying this one by i would give us the point d. So I've drawn it up. So what I need to do is get this vector a, b. So remember that point there is the vector 4 minus i and this vector here up to b would be 2i so we get that as z2 and what we want is the vector from a to b which is going to be our vector z2 minus z1 so once I can see that that's the one I want I can see that z2 minus z1 would be 2 minus i plus 4 Minus two, 2 minus i, 2i minus 4 plus i. So it gives me minus 4 plus 3i. So really what we I will be doing that, because that's not at the origin. So if we have our, if we took all that and shifted across the origin and then rotated them around, then I would be able to get that nicely. So just be careful when we do go to rotate it and move it, I'm going to have to have our reference point as that one because the vectors there are going to be from that point. So we'll see that in a moment. So that just goes, tells us about our rotation, Z times I and what, what happens there. So what I want is to find the point C. Now, 
what I'm going to do, as I said, to find the point C there, which was the rotation and moving in that direction, I'm going to multiply by minus I. So I took my Z2 minus Z1, multiply it by minus I, so it would give us minus one times minus I times 4 gives us positive 4I, minus I times 3I gives us a positive 3. So what we're saying here is that this this vector now, from this point to this point, would be 3 plus 4i. So if we looked at our, our that would be a vector 3 plus 4i. But remember we started at this point for minus i. So what I need to do is take that vector and it's going you know, to add it to that vector because to get to this point, we want to go to this vector, then, go to, then move in this direction of this vector. So that vector here would be the addition of those two. So that's why we say 4 minus i plus the 3 plus 4i gives us the 7 plus 3i. Same thing with d. This time we're going to go in this direction. So to get this vector here, it's rotated around by, by 90 degrees. So times it by i gives us three minus, minus 3 minus 4i. And again, we're going to add, because to get to this point, we're going to go to this vector down, down, down here. So it's ending up at this point. So we're going to add those two to give us that point there. So either of these two points form right angle triangles with our right angle at that point. Proving that those four form a square in the argand diagram. Well, remember our properties of our, of our square. Particularly the easiest ones to prove is if we have equal diagonals and meaning at 90 degree angles, then we have a square. We could do it the other way around, but that's a lot of work in proving all four sides and, and doing all that. So if you have a look at our solution, I've got the, dis the, the vectors of AC and BD. So we've found the diagonals, the complex number of the diagonals. If we take our modulus of both, we notice we get the same, the same modulus. And if we get our arguments, inverse 10 of 14 on, 14 on 6, argument of BD is inverse 10 of 6 on minus 14. If we multiply those two, we can see we get minus 1. So the modulus is the same, so the diagonals are equal, and the gradients are negative reciprocals, which means it's going to they're going to be perpendicular, means that we're going to satisfy the conditions for it to be a square. There's other ways you could do that one. That's the most efficient, though, is to find the, the complex numbers for AC and BD and then find the moduli of both and the arguments and show that they form a square from that.